Alrighty, welcome to another four on four cube draft. We're drafting with Sam Rolf's cube, and I've opened a Mind Twist, Smuggler's Copeter, Psymaster Thoptwist is a nice little new one. There's a Noble in here. Yeah, not the most exciting pack. I'm passing to Salvato, getting passed to by Troll Ascetic. I've got Isaac, Mac, and Tom Martell on my team, battling against Troll Ascetic, Salvato, Adham, and Team J Bro. Bang, bang. Uh, I'm just gonna take the Mind Twist, it's, it's fine. And you need some acceleration. It's a good card. I mean, Smuggler's Copter, honestly, is comparable. Smuggler's Copter is a really good card, too. But I think Mind Twist is like a little bit better. What's going to come back? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, definitely going to get Deadly Dispute back. Probably Duretti. Maybe, probably Exarch Scott Ever Sai. I think all, and, or maybe one of these green cards doesn't get taken. But not passing anything great. Obviously, Mind Twist is, I think, Worse than the first pick I'm hoping to take on average, but it's all right. It's a solid card. Some some matchups it can be really good. Oh, so this pack has Force of Will, Time Spiral, Polluted Delta. Those are all pretty nice. I mean, Windswept Teeth is there too, but it's much worse than Delta. When you have Mind Twist, of course. I like Coveted Jewel, Night's Whisper, Fiery Confluence, all solid. Um, I think I take Force of Will here. I, I like Time Spiral as well but i think force will goes better with mind twist and honestly early in the pack in the draft i honestly think force will might be better than time spiral they're both pretty good so Vado will probably take whichever one i don't which is fine all right we'll take force of will and let's see one two three four five. yeah we might get a talisman or a knight's whisper back i don't think it's impossible to to see to think that might happen all right well, i'm just gonna take the other force now i like wheel of fortune and all that but i just don't have a <laughs> there's a memory jar too Future hull breachers are going to be a little worse. Actually, there's a commit memory. There's all the draw sevens. I think I just take force negation here and set up to be a little bit more controlling. Oh, giant killer got added. No, not bad. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, nothing too spectacular coming back my way, I wouldn't say. Breach the multiverse. Wow, someone's going deep. Underworld cookbook. All right. Well, I'm probably just going to take Grist here because I actually really like Grist in a controlling shell. I don't love City of Brass and Control Decks that much. Just taking damage every time you tap your line is so bad. Sylvan Library is also pretty good. Hmm. Sylvan's good with the forces because you can just like Sylvan up, pay a bunch of life, and then force their play. I wonder if it is better than Grist, though. No, I think Grist is pretty awesome. Let's just take that. I guess that advantage of Sylvan is it's only green, and I could be moving away from black maybe, but I don't really see a reason to do that right now. Like Sylvan, if I take Sylvan, I could draft blue green, but Mind Twist is pretty strong, especially with the cards I already have. Oh, I love Snuff Out. I like him to Turok. I actually like Teferi a lot. Probe is pretty solid, but Snuff Out is great. I have all free spells. Currently, I have 60% free spells. <laughs> I like it. I mean, this deck's got. Here, I'll, I'll move the Mind Twist around so we can uh, see where it lands. But uh, this deck's got two good counters, a good removal spell, a Mind Twist, a nice Planeswalker. So I, I, I kind of like all this. Not getting anything back. There's a very small chance we get him back. Let's see. One, two, three. No, I don't think that likely. Ooh. Spell Pierce versus Liliana versus Brainstorm. This is looking like a Spell Pierce deck. I want to up my blue count for the forces. I think Spell Pierce is pretty good. I have no shuffle effect, so Brainstorm doesn't look that good. I guess it's good with Grist. You Brainstorm, then plus one Grist to mill yourself. I think Liliana's okay, but I really like Spell Pierce. So I'm just going to take that. And there will be two cards left. There will be Burgi and... Actually, every other card's playable, so I don't know. Manamorphose, probably. Though maybe one of the green creatures, because there's usually, like, around two green drafters at the table, and they might not both want to take one of those mana dorks. I don't know. I also could be Splashing Grist. I mean, I'm looking like I'm pretty solid blue-black here. Let's separate out the Grist just for the moment. All right. I will continue to, to incrementally disrupt my opponent. I'm going to take Duress now over like Custody Lich, Cake Man, Spellseeker, and Lotus Field. I just think Duress is excellent. It's just a really good piece of disruption. Oh, there's a Marsh Flats? All right, that's a late Marsh Flats. This must have been a good pack. There's still a Fatal Push in it, too. Can't beat a Veil of Summer. I hope Salvato doesn't take it, but whatever. I still have to take Marsh Flats here. Just, I'm a two, maybe three color deck, and I have no fixing yet. Marsh Flats looks pretty great to me. I'm going to splash this Grist, maybe. Be a little salt eye control. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good pack. Veil of Summer is a good card. 
Fatal Push is a good card. Oliphant's a great card. I mean, I'll, I think the two best cards are like Oliphant, Fatal Push, followed by Veil, some Mana Dorks. Dark, someone might want Dark Depths. I'd even be interested in Tassiger if I wasn't, uh, if there was no Marsh Flats there. All right, so Deadly Dispute came back. So did Scrapwork Mutt, Ballista, and Surge Incher. And Deceiver Exarch, but I'm really not that likely to want Deceiver X out. Exarch, uh, maybe I want just Walking Ballista. It's just a fine card. It doesn't look like Deadly Dispute's going to be very good here. Yeah, Ballista's also just a very strong card I'd rather not pass. Okay, so Talisman did come back alongside Flame Tongue, Mind Collapse, Giver of Runes, Helix, Cabal Ritual. I could take Talisman because I have a Marsh Flats plus a Talisman, and that gives me a good White Splash, like if I get a Teferi Time Raveler or something, and I get to pass two red cards to Sylvato. You can only just you can only take one of them. And maybe this Grist doesn't work out. Uh, that's fine. We'll see what the mana situation ends up being. But a black-white talisman seems decent here. I don't expect to get much back the rest of this pack. But I think for not having any busted cards, having Spell Pierce, Force, Force, plus Duress, Mind Twist, Snuff Out, that's a pretty good set of cards. And, and I even have a Fetch Land and then a Grist if I need to, if I can end up splashing it. So this looks like a pretty solid start. It's a very fair start, which is okay. I don't hate drafting fair decks. I do like drafting academy decks. That's fun. Time spiral decks. Those are great. And they can be really good. But I think the cards lined up to draft a pretty nice fair deck this time. And I think blue-black control is a totally legit archetype in this cube. Tendrils did come back interesting. So did Sahili and Robber of the Rich. Bunch of Boros cards. I don't really think Sacred Foundry looks that great to me. I don't really want Tendrils. I think I'll take Sahili. This is the kind of card Salvato would be more likely to play, I think. Oh, there's Pestermite. There's also Breach. Huh, seven mana. I mean, this looks like a seven mana win the game card, and I don't care about passing City of Brass. I'll take a Breach the Multiverse. Why not? We'll see. Oh, him to Turok did wheel. Oh, that's really lucky. Okay, well, that that's great. Him to Turok wheeling is a, is a very good sign. First of all, I'm probably the, the only heavy black drafter at the table, and <laughs> these two cards came back. Funny, funny. Um, and I picked up another really good piece of disruption. So I like the way this is looking. Don't think I'm going to want to move away from blue. The blue cards are still really good in this deck. But it is nice. I have a lot of discard now. <laughs> Duress him, Mind Twist is kind of a lot. Oh, last pick, Silent Clearing. All right, sure. This is the kind of deck that could use Ancestral Recall. Wow. I, I think Ancestral would be better in my deck than Time Walk or Lotus right now. I hope to get a chance to test that theory. <laughs> I did not, but I did pick up a Seasoned Dungeoneer, and I actually think I'm going to take this, because this is a 4-mana win-the-game kind of st style card, right? You get the initiative, it can always take back the initiative by getting pro creatures. And I have Marsh Flats and Silent Clearing. Alright, the Sahili's probably not making it. I'll put Grist in the Possibilities camp, but between Talisman, Marsh Flat, and Silent Clearing, I can easily play Seasoned Dungeoneer. It's the best card. Sneak Attack, or Sneak Attack, maybe second. And I do like Volcanic but and Mystical Tutor and all that, but I don't see a reason to take those. Is there a chance Creeping Tar Pit Wheels? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six really good cards, plus like Punishing Fire Shields and Edict are all reasonable things, but I'm just going to take Seasoned Engineer here. Seems pretty clear that's what I'm supposed to take in this spot. Also didn't get past much in the way of white cards, so I think Troll Ascetic, who I'm passing to this pack, is decently likely to be playing white. There was the late Marsh Flats, I guess, but still, I think uh, passing a Seasoned Engineer there doesn't sound like the right play, and I think it's the best card for my deck. Oh, wow. So it says Fallen Shinobi in it, which is a card I was hoping to pick up, though I'm not even that good with it. There's Jace, obviously great. There's Atrox. I hate passing Atrox. Huh? There's also Parallax Wave. Hmm. I think I'm just going to take Jace. Look, Force of Negation and Force of Will plus Jace are just so good. When you go like Jace, Force of Will, your counterspell, Resolve Jace, or just Jace, Brainstorm, and then on their turn you Force or Force them, or Snuff them out, it's just unbelievable. Parallax Wave's good, but it's not even the best Parallax Wave deck. You need, you want a lot more creatures in it, and I don't really want to take a double white card. So yeah, I'm going to take Jace, pass a bunch of really good cards. This pack's actually strong enough that I wouldn't be shocked if Fallen Shinobi wield. I'm not saying it will, but... Definitely could. Okay, here we have Dothy Voidwalker and Necromancy. 
And there's also like Gaunti, but that's not a high priority. Seachrome Coast, I hope to wheel, I guess. I think the Voidwalker looks better in this deck, but Necromancy is a better card. But I just don't have any creatures besides a Seasoned Engineer. That's kind of tough. It's really good Dothy Voidwalker deck. All right, I'm just going to take the Dothy Voidwalker. Oh, wait, I'm not passing a Mana Leak. I don't love passing Reanimate either, but I feel like there's no way Troll Aesthetic's playing black, not with that late him. So it's not even hurting my team, I don't think, to pass that, and Mana Leak is just by far the best card for me. If uh, Dark Confident came back around, I'd be happy too. Ooh, Molten Collapse, a new addition from Lost Caverns. I've seen a couple other Lost Caverns cards floating around, but yeah, happy to take Mana Leak. I really could use a blue-black duel. Oh, now we're passing Archon. This is what we're doing. Um, I'm, man, I kind of want to take the Archon because I just passed a bunch of reanimates. But I don't think Troll Aesthetic took them. There's also, but the thing is, what else is there for me? I, I like Unearth. I actually added this one to the cube. That was one of my last adds. It's good with Voidwalker. It's actually good with Grist, too. And I'm still holding out hope that I can play this Grist. If I take the Archon, I'm not putting it in my deck, probably. It doesn't really look like I have... I mean, I guess I can Breach it back, but... I don't even know if I'm playing Breach, either. The problem is, it's brutal if Matt took the, both black cards, so I don't think he did. I just passed Archon, Atroxa, Reanimate, Necromancy. I'm gonna take the Archon, I just... I feel like it's worth... Oh, look! And then I got Persist, okay. And it's also Persist is also fine with Dungeoneer and Dothy Voidwalker. All right, I kind of just moved into Reanimator. I can pick up a discard outlet. I'm passing up on a Talisman. That's not that big of a deal. All right. I like it. There's also a Rona there that would be nice to discard with, but I think I think it's just too too bad. Uh, I don't think the Ballista looks that good to, to just pass Archon there. Like maybe, you know, maybe Matt is not playing those cards and maybe I'm cutting a teammate, but... I just felt like taking a basically zero, hoping it would get to my team, doesn't sound right. And I could still play the Archon. Like, there's still combinations of cards that let me Archon here. I would actually consider Breach to be a maybe as well here. That was pick six. Salvato's probably tilting off that he passed me Necromancy, Reanimate, Atroxa, Archon. <laughs> Though, it didn't quite work out that way. And now there's... Consider consider a blue cantrip with two, double forces that could, if I get really lucky, dump Archon. And is also decent with, like, Jace. You can, like, mill your top card. I think is better than a tapped black-green land for Grist. Any of these red-blue lands. Lotus Field is a nice one. It's a Lotus Field, except it doesn't have Hexproof. It comes into play untapped, but you have to sack untapped lands. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's good for some decks, but it just doesn't look very good here. Here... I don't think I'm very likely to want any of these cards. So what's the best card to take? Mm. Passing to Troll Aesthetic. I don't really know. I mean, you could be playing green, but all these cards are like pretty comparable. I think I'll just take Orm's Chant as a sideboard card. I feel like Salvato could just be like a Time Spiral Tendrils deck. Orm's Chant in response to Time Spiral is pretty sick. So that is a straight up sideboard card. So I've just got six packs on him. All right, bud, let's go, let's go. Wow, miscalculation came back? Hmm, I didn't expect that to be one, especially if Mystical Tutor's still there too. Okay, uh, I don't remember what was in the pack, but miscal... I remember wanting to wheel something, but miscalc wasn't really on my radar to have to, to be something that wheeled, so I'm happy enough taking it, though. Oh, Fallen Shinobi I thought might come back. All right, I'm going to take Fallen Shinobi under the hope that I get some more cheap creatures because it's so good for this style of deck and I'm missing out on a Council's Judgment. I don't care. Oh, I'll take Imperial Seal. Right now, this isn't looking like a fantastic Imperial Seal deck, but it always could be. Okay, a white-green Talisman? Hmm, I don't think I want a red-black thing. I guess I'll just take Chromatic Star. Oh, I guess Talisman of Unity actually could help Fallen or uh, cast Grist and Seasoned Engineer. All right, I'll, I'll take the Talisman. That's fine. I kind of wanted a Talisman anyway. All right, Unearth is back. I'll hate a Settle the Wreckage. I don't think Matt's that likely to play Mystic Forge. All right. Whew, pack three, huh? So we've got a bit of a reanimator, like a minor reanimate sort of thing going on, which is fine. I think having small uh, kind of combo synergies can be pretty good in a control deck. I've got 
some fixing needed right now. I just have a Marsh Flats a silent clearing. And Ancestral Recalls needed too. Didn't get one. What do we got? We have Urza as just a good card. Turok, which I think will wheel, usually does. Glen, which is also a pretty good card. Troll, which is good. I hope to pick up a blue black duel. There's also like Wasteland. I kind of want to just take Urza. Urza is just a very strong card. I don't have a ton of artifacts, but you don't need a ton for Urza to be good. It's a blue card for all the forces. It's actually pretty good with Shinobi because it puts two creatures into play. It can help me cast Archon. And passing Urza, I generally don't like to do. So yeah, this seems like a fine pick there. This pack has, I guess, a Lorien revealed for me. Lorien revealed looks excellent in a deck with double force, and it's just a good card to begin with. Still really want a blue-black land. I'll have to take blue-black land over almost anything now. Brain Maggot and Bone Shards in the pack as well, but that's not a, not too appealing. This Unearth is looking kind of mediocre. I kind of hope to get enough cheap creatures to make Unearth and Shinobi both better. Like... I think Vendillion Click might already be gone. I don't remember. Oh, there's an Entomb. It got passed back to me. So, yeah, there's no way Matt's playing that reanimate deck. But I'm just going to take the Entomb now over, like, Underbound Adventure. That's fine. And Bayou. Bayou would be nice. But Entomb Persist with Archon is just busted. So, And I have Imperial Seal. So I guess I've just backdoored into into reanimate at this point. The or Orm's Chance not making it in. Walking Ballista doesn't look great here. But it's, it is good with Urza. I don't think Breach the Multiverse is happening. Let's see what else we got. Oh, there's Fractured Identity and Zagoth Trium. Huh. So Fractured is another strong card to splash. Off a black, two black white duels, a black white talisman, and maybe a white green talisman. There's Gorio's Vengeance, but that's legendary, and this is not. So that's not what I want. It really just is. Do I want Zagoth Trium or Fractured Identity? And I think I should just take Zagoth Trium. By taking Zagoth Trium, it makes Lorien Revealed into a blue black green land. It Allows me to play Grist. It also makes Marsh Flats into a blue land. It just does so much. I should just make my mana a little bit better. And getting to play Grist is a pretty big upside. So I think that's reasonable. Oh, and now there's Oko. Yeah, now I'll just take Oko over Balance here. And the Zagoth Trion pick worked out beautifully. Okay. So don't think I'm playing Unearth right now. Though, actually, now that Grist is in my deck, I'm probably going to want to play Unearth. Oh, there's Gristlebrand. There's also Underworld Breach, but we're not doing that. The problem I have with Gristlebrand is I can't reanimate it. This is non-legendary, and it doesn't really make sense to take it. There's also Umazawa's Gta, but it's not a Gta deck, and Salvato doesn't always draft those either. I might take Time Raveler. I could also potentially consider Oath. Oath of Druids is actually not crazy. It's pretty good to Oath into most of these. The Oathing into Season Dungeoneer is kind of bad. Maybe I just take Teferi Time Raveler. It's also taking a good card away from my opponents, I think. Wouldn't mind a little more fixing. Maybe I just take Black White Land here because I don't care about Basalt Monolith. Sadly, I don't think Fallen Shinobi is making the cut here. Pick seven. All right. One more pick. We could we could get an eighth pick Underground Sea. That seems possible. We've got an eighth pick Marsh Flats. That card's better than Underground Sea. Currently, we're at 15 lands. We actually need to cut a couple cards here. Uh, really at 16 land, I guess, because Lorien Revealed counts as land. Yeah, I mean, this is looking pretty good. Maybe maybe I just cut the green-white talisman. Maybe I play it. I don't know. I have a lot of Planeswalkers in these four colors. But I think Zagoth Trium, Marsh Flats, Courtyard, Silent Clearing, Double Talisman, Lorien Revealed. I'm not feeling that bad about my mana. Oh, Recurring Nightmare is back. Or not back, sorry. It's a late recurring nightmare. Let me let me fix that. Okay. I do like recurring nightmare in general. I have Grist. I don't have enough creatures though to make it good, I don't think. Honestly, I think I might just take the black green land. I think the land is gonna be better for me. I don't really need a discard outlet that much. I guess I have Archon and no way to discard it right now, so Thirst could be kind of nice for that. I just hate when I'm already cutting cards to take. I'm just going to take a land, because I don't have to cut anything for a land. Oh, Glenn came back? I didn't really anticipate Glenn coming back. I thought Turok would. Yeah, I like Glenn and Dark Mage a lot. Not very good with Persist. Neither is Turok. Well, can't even Persist Turok, so. Oh, Bone Shards. Okay. Now I have a discard outlet. That's pretty much all I needed. So it actually would have worked out better to take Necromancy, Reanimate. Though I think... I can't remember now, but I think the Reanimate and the Atroxel might have been in the same pack. But going heavy Reanimator would have worked out better, as it turned out. 
Something to think about. Um, I don't think I want to play Witherbloom Command, so I think I'll take Explosives as a, as a sideboard card. So I need to cut a bunch of cards here. We're at 13, 14 lands. I need to cut like three cards. I mean, I think splashing both the white and the green makes a lot of sense here. It's possible that Unearth should be the cut. I don't think a Talisman should be. kind of don't want to cut any of these Planeswalkers. I don't really want to cut anything here. Hmm. It's tough. Too many good cards, you know. Too many good cards. Don't want to cut any of them. Part of the reason I just took the land. Oh, another land. Sure. Pass out. Pass some cards that I don't care about. Uh, these Both these red drops are pretty equivalent, so I'll just take the Reclaimer. Yeah, I still need to cut three here. Hmm. I'm considering, couldn't consider, I have a bunch of tap lands. I have three tap lands plus often Marsh Flats is going to want to fetch Zagoth Triumph and Lorraine Revealed. So yes, it reduces my blue count a little bit, but I think it's still better to cut consider here. I have a good amount of fours, so I guess I probably shouldn't cut the Talismans. I just need to cut two more cards. I don't really want to cut any of the creatures. Or one mana spells, or two mana spells, or three mana spells, or four mana spells, or five or six. Okay, so I guess I can't cut anything. Dang. Uh, I'll take Woodfall Primus, I guess. Though my one reanimate's not even good with it. <laughs> I mean, this isn't like the best reanimate deck in the world, but uh, I think that it's got some good stuff going on. So let's see. I can actually just build it right here. Mm -hmm. So... It's like a mini reanimate deck. All right, soul type mini reanimate. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So need to cut some cards. Not very many, but definitely some. I don't think. I mean, I guess what well, we can go through it and 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 find out. I don't think I want to cut. I don't think I want to cut the like Entomb package, especially with Imperial Seal. So that means Entomb, Imperial Seal, Persist, Archon is just this like untouchable little thing. I don't want to cut any of the blue cards except maybe Archmage. But four, seven, nine blue cards plus the two planes. So 11 blue cards is pretty nice for the double force. Don't really want to cut Dungeoneer. So it might be that I have to cut Unearth and Voidwalker. Voidwalker is really good. Bone Shards is also potentially cuttable, but it seems like having a way to discard Archon is pretty good. Especially since, some, what if I have my, my hand is like Archon Persist Imperial Seal? Like being able to go get Bone Shards there seems, seems important. So maybe I just do cut Unearth and Voidwalker. Unearth on Grist does seem pretty dope, but I need to cut two cards. So I don't know what else it could be. It could be a Talisman, but I have four good four drops and the Talisman fixes my mana. Both of them are two colors I am because all the colors. So yeah, I guess so. And that cuts the only cheap creature besides Grist. All right, I guess I will run this and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, so we saw this, ended up cutting, yeah, Dothy Voidwalker and Unearth. Let's take a look at our teammates' decks here. I've got some good ones. So this is Isaac. He's going to cut the show and tell. But it's basically Grixis Aggro. Dark Confidant, Robber the Rich, Copter, Third Path Iconoclast, Sir Ginger, Fable and True Name, and Rabble Master, Caves of Chaos Adventure, Good Lands, plus Ancient Tomb, with some good disruption. So I, I do like that deck. <laughs> this is Tom's. So all of the... Black reanimate stuff went to Tom, and then he opened Entomb and Sol Ring. Had to take Sol Ring, so I got the Entomb. But he ended up with the Gristlebrand, the Atroxa, the Necro Necromancy, Reanimate, and Animate Dead, and Gorio's Vengeance with Mystical Tutor, Faithless Looting, but also just five colors worth of cards and Strip Mine. So we'll see how Tom does. But I think this deck has some really powerful stuff going on. And then lastly, we have Mac, who has Sapphire Ruby. A good red-green curve is cutting... The, well, no, it might be his runner for Titania, but Questing Beast, Comet, uh, Rampaging Ferocidon, Reckless Storm Seeper, plus really good mana. So I like our decks. I think we have a good shot. Playing against uh, Aomimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
guarantee I hate playing silent clearing as my opening hand, guaranteed taking a couple damage, but we have two aggro decks on our team. Well, and he's playing the third and he mana crypt me on okay. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna lose. Turn one Cathar Commando plus Mother of Runes. Uh, okay, down a game, I guess. Mm. Mm. All right. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, sure, I mean, I guess I'll duress you. Probably going to miss. Oh, I hit Parallax Wave. All right, that's, that's something. That's something. So... I guess if Adam doesn't draw any other other plays and I get to play these things over the next couple turns, sorry, Sack Sunbait Canyon miss. Oh, we're casting a spell? Oh no, okay, good. Please don't cast a spell this turn. No. I was already losing. Uh, Scrapwork Mud's not great, but getting an extra card is big and then I really need to, to not take too many more too much more in the way of attacks here. I'm already under a pretty fast clock, but all right, keeping mother runes back, which makes sense. Draw. Okay, well. Don't love the Archon of Cruelty there. I'm just gonna get Zagoth Trium here. Play it, pass the turn, get hit for five down to ten. And I guess if I draw a land next turn, I get to play Grist or Oko. All right. Let's see how that goes, shall we? Okay. No played, and I draw a land. No, I didn't draw a land, so now I'm just dead. I'm not even going to bother. If I drew a land there, I was still probably dead, but not drawing a land. All right, well... I don't really want Spell Pierce, and I do think Engineered Explosives is probably decent. First of all, it's got double zero, and also is going to cluster at one and two. So I think that's fine. Can't really get Shinobi in. There's also Walking Ballista, which is pretty good against Mother of Rune specifically. So maybe I want that over Force of Negation. Now I just have the Force of Will. I know I can Force Negation Mana Crypt and Mox. I just don't win games doing that sort of thing very much. I don't think that I want that card in my deck for that specific interaction. All right. I don't actually think this is a terrible matchup in the sense that we have the ability to have a really quick Archon. Snuff Out is fantastic here. The Planeswalkers tend to be pretty good. I think Ballista and Explosives are both pretty good. So I just hope that, uh, yeah, my opponent doesn't go turn one Mox Mana Crypt on the play. Like they played Mox Mana Crypt and played <laughs> two creatures on turn one. Like, yeah, I'm not going to beat that. That is not, not very likely to happen. Don't think I want Sahili. Don't think I want Voidwalker. There's, I guess, an argument for playing Voidwalker over Glenelendra Archmage. But I think I'd rather keep the blue count a little higher. And Voidwalker being unable to block is, is a bit of a bummer. So I think I'll pass. All right. I would like to play first. Yeah, I mean, I got to keep this. Well, I have all my colors, actually all four. So here... I might have to Force of Will a Mana Crypt on turn one. I'm not going to Force of Will a Mox Pearl. Mana Crypt I would Force of Will on turn one. And uh, just live with it. And then I hope to draw one of my four different Planeswalkers that can give me some value here. That, that's a good way to kind of make up for Mana Crypt or uh, Force of Will getting two for one. All right, well, he, he mulliganed, so that's something. Not Force of Willing Mother of Runes. Mother of Runes is, is very annoying, but... I need to draw not land also, but I don't think I can afford to force it. This hand is too action light to, to be forcing Mother of Runes. I know I'm just going to draw two more lands and die, but you know, that's okay. We'll try. What do we got here? One mana play, huh? Okay. Giant killer. Okay. And no second land. Okay. Okay. Not land, please. All right, play Glenn, I guess. Don't really see a reason not to. I mean, I know I don't have Force of Will up, but 
basically Adam has one turn to draw Mana Crypt. And if he does, then it's a problem. Esper Sentinel is actually not a problem. That, that one's just totally fine. All right, need to draw a spell. Guess I'm just going to play this and pass. And then cycle Zagoth Trium, end of turn. I am keeping up Force of Will, which I don't really anticipate hardcasting because there's a Esper Sentinel in play. But we'll see. All right, let's cycle Zagoth Trium. <laughs> Could we draw a spell? <laughs> Is it possible? Uh, I guess. Uh, sure, we'll play a land and just continue passing the turn. I mean, look, my opponent's on one land on turn, about to be turn five here, which is obviously very unlucky, but I also haven't drawn a spell yet. I've drawn a persist. That's the only spell I've drawn. So I'm gonna just lose so badly if he draws a land here. Though if I draw a spell, oh, that was a spell. All right, let's go Urza here. I don't have force up anymore, but Urza is a pretty strong one, and this makes me want to attack with the Glen too, I think. All right, pass the turn. You have now one turn to draw something. Also, most of the things that kill Urza, I can counter with Glenelinja Archmage, because once I start spinning Urza, then things will be good. All right, well, you drew the land, but I think it was probably too late. We'll see, we'll see. What are we casting for two mana here? Scrapwork Mutt, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that will get you to maybe land number three. But I feel like we're in pretty good shape at the moment. Mm. I expect to see like a four mana card discarded here. Probably not Parallax Wave though. That one's a little too good. Are we really tanking over what to discard? Feels like you probably have a lot of cards that aren't very good if I had to guess. All right, and then next turn, I'm just gonna f start spinning Urza main phase. I won't have Force of Will up, but I think it's worth it because if I, I can't spin Urza, oh, discarded Lightning Helix, because we don't have red mana, sure. If I, if I pass, I can't like spin Urza end of turn. It doesn't let you cast things at a time you couldn't normally cast them. Oh, never mind. We got a, we got a new plan. All right, I'm gonna Entomb. Pay one to prevent this, yes. Entomb Archon, Swamp, Persist the Archon. And then I still actually have Force of Will up here, thanks to the Construct token, tapping for mana. And of course I have Glenelinja Archmage up. I'm gonna sack the, the Hound Dog. I'm gonna draw, I've already played a land. Oof, turned out my opponent being mana screwed for like six turns was enough for me to, to to eke out the game it was looking bad though honestly that like when i drew like land number five or whatever if adam had probably adam had probably like a turn two or two turn window to just draw land number two play a spell draw land number three play a spell and like go from there i think that window's now shut i did draw too many cards that were good but there was a time i'm probably not going to have to show force of will either because Glenn will probably do the heavy lifting here, but we'll see. I mean, there's really not even that much that gets you out of this situation. I guess you can... Oh, I'm actually going to go to Glenn and that. The reason I'm countering the Talisman is because... Oh, and you had Path. I see. I wanted to stop the Giant Killer from tapping uh, the Archon. All right. Well, that's fair. Let's get another Swamp, I guess. I still feel like I'm in just fantastic shape here so that was a good play though talisman looking like you were going to use giant killer into baiting me to path archon but archon gave me a pretty good amount of value there and now let's just go seasoned dungeoneer get another island and then i have the initiative and then i want to leave the the construct back so mother of runes can't steal initiative from me and I think I hit with the Archmage here and oh I get to explore I didn't I didn't really this is a wizard <laughs> all right well that's pretty sick and then now I don't think I'm going to Imperial Seal here because I want to keep Hardcast Force up and I want to pay for Esper Sentinel and if I Imperial Seal 
I guess I could pay for Esper Sentinel and then I'd have to tap this to cast Force and not pay for Esper Sentinel. I don't really need any particular thing. Pretty good chance that I'm going to Imperial Seal next turn or two, but I also think that uh, this is going to be a pretty tough game for my opponent to win. I guess Parallax Wave is going to be the, the Hail Mary here, would be my guess. We'll see. I guess you can't even just cast Parallax Wave into Glenelg Archmage, so... Skyclave Apparition. That I will force a will. Let's go ahead and pay the, the extra tax. Skyclave down, and then can't really get in. And then now I get to put two plus one plus one counters, which is, means I'm going to forge onto the Glenelg Archmage. And because the Glen hasn't died yet, it gets to effectively reset the persist. It's pretty nice. All right, so forge, put counters there. Whenever you attack, okay, so let's choose one of those two. So let's do that first, I guess. Actually, I, I think I should spin Urza first. I guess I should have done that before attacking. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I'm going to explore, so I don't really want to ooh, mess with my top card. So I'm going to attack with the Glen and the Dungeoneer, and I think have the Dungeoneer get pro creatures and explore. Mm, snuff out. No, I'll keep the snuff out. That, that one seems like it's acceptable. And you, you can just take seven here, it's something you can do. And then I get to cast Lord and Revealed for free. It's pretty good as a hit. Sure, let's pay the one. Draw three, and this game is over. I mean, this game, I think, was over a while ago. Um, play that. I guess, do I want to play Talisman to Fairy? I guess, or I just leave up Mana Leak. I guess at that point, might as well Imperial Seal here. I'm at 23. It's not like I'm going to die. And then... Um, Put a ballista on top, and then I probably won't even cast the ballista this game. I suspect I will not be needing to do that. And I don't really care about showing Imperial Seal. That doesn't really, really bother me too much. All right. Time to get the screenshot ready. <laughs> I mean, this thing plus this thing. Like, I have seven points of, of damage attacking next turn. Also, I have trap, so... Upkeep, it's just going to work. All right, well, going to game three on the draw here. On the draw, I really don't like duress, so I'm going to cut it. Um, it just doesn't hit Mana Crypt or Mox. Those holes are going to be in play on turn one. And it hits, like, Parallax Wave, Lightning Helix Path, but, like, there's so many creatures in the opposing deck. I really don't think that's where I want to be. Honestly, I'd rather just have Consider, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's that or, like, play, like, Sahili. Sahili is kind of good. If you can go Sahili plus Cheap Spell. But, yeah, I think this deck on the draw is going to have enough trouble landing three drop plus spell that I think I'd do that. I could also put the Dothy Voidwalker in at this point. Maybe that's just a stronger card. Yeah. All right, let's get the Voidwalker in. And maybe it'll just be good. I mean, it's not like there's that much it can hit, but I guess if you go Dothy Voidwalker into Mind Twist, that can be pretty sick. Also saw a lot of one drops. Engine Explosives was looking pretty good. So let's see how, how game three plays out here. My teammates, Max going to game three against Salvato, who's on blue-green upheaval, fast bond, time spiral, yeah, all that stuff for sure. And Martel is up a game. <laughs> Martel used Dak Faden to steal Palantir of Orthanc, which then milled Atroxa when the opponent didn't want him to draw it for him to Gorio's Vengeance back. That's pretty good. All right. On the draw, I kind of both do want and don't want Force of Will in my opening hand. I guess I would rather just have a good hand that doesn't necessarily need Force, but if he's got Mana Crypt in his opening hand, then yeah, I do really want Force of Will to stop that because... Mana Crypt on turn one is uh, pretty savage. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. As someone who doesn't have any moxes or anything like that, 
what just happened? Uh, we have to go to game three. All right. All right. We had a 39 card issue, so we just remade the match. Game. This is game three still. I've sideboarded just the same. I'm on the draw, and I will keep this hand. Let's hope this uh, engineered explosives does some work, because this hand's a little slow, but, I mean, this deck doesn't have any acceleration, so I don't really have much of an option. Of course, drawing an island isn't as good as drawing a swamp, but I could see... Teferi into explosives being a potentially nice curve. And, oh wow, no one or two drop. I mean, that's pretty nice. Can I just draw a mana leak or something? Mm, not quite. Let's just play this and pass. I don't think it really makes sense to play explosives for one or two. Like, Adam clearly didn't draw a hand with one or two drops. Could it maybe play a Cathar Commando, but doesn't even have that. All right, let's hope this is something that Teferi can bounce profitably. Oh, it is. Nice, Steel Seraph. Okay, so let's just go to Fairy, bounce that, and then maybe set up a mind twist. Okay, actually, don't hate in tomb. The explosives is looking pretty bad, but I bet there's some at some point in the game where it'll be good. Oh, and I do persist off the in tomb. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is, assuming the play here is just Steel Seraph, maybe I just play plus one to Fairy, play Glen. Hmm. What I really do want to draw is just a swamp. That would be ideal. Because if I just draw a swamp, then I can just play a... Oh, interesting. Okay. Palace Jailer with nothing in play. But if, if I just draw a swamp, I get to end of turn Archon. That would be really nice. All right. I didn't draw a swamp. Get to plus one. Hmm. This is pretty awkward. Because if I play the reckless, the Restless Cottage, I can set up in Tomb next turn. But then I just don't do anything this turn. I guess I could Mind Twist for two. This feels like a little bit weak. I could also play Glen. And I think I just want to do that. I don't necessarily get to Archon next turn. But first of all, I get to Archon if I draw a Black Source. Second, I get to... Maybe just cast a big mind twist next turn. And Glenelinger Archmage threatens to steal the Monarch, though I guess playing Steel Seraph will change that potentially. Okay, Winds of Abandon. Oh, well, that actually worked out just fine because now I get a Swamp. I get to do the whole thing if I want. And this is Adeline. Okay. You have four cards left. I guess I could mind twist. No, you're gonna go to five cards in a second. I'm only taking one, presumably. Teferi's taking two. Okay. No creature land in play. All right, I think I'm gonna go mind twist you for five. And then I'm gonna take a hit next turn for six damage, it's eight damage. All right, what did I get? I got I got a Mox that probably drew that off the... Oh, and a Wasteland, that's nice. All right, so I'm taking eight damage here down to 11 off Adeline and Co. But then I get to go... Oh, I guess I actually should upkeep in Tomb because it's kind of a disaster if I draw the Archon. Okay, you get to draw, upkeep, let's in Tomb. Okay, what I want to draw here is a Counterspell. Force of Will would be amazing. Jace isn't actually the worst. Let's start by persisting the Archon here. Because if I draw an untapped land, maybe I play Jace. I could also have exploded for zero to kill the tokens and make you sack one of the other creatures instead. But I kind of just want to draw and see if I can draw into something. Um, okay, let's just play this for zero then. And play Restless Cottage, and then pass the turn. So it would have worked out better to use the explosives first. That's fine. If Adham can kill the Archon, we have a close game. If he can't, the game's over. Like, I just win. If he can kill Archon, then I get to play Jace and Oko next turn if I want. I mean, that's pretty good. 
especially since I can kill all the zeros first, which I probably will. All right, I'm going to let this resolve. I'm at 14. Hmm. Um, let's block Adeline. I think that's fine. I will sack the explosives first. So I take less damage. I don't really, I could not block it. I, I'm I'm letting my Archon die to Lightning Helix here, but taking four just doesn't sound great to me. And I can pretty easily beat uh, just a Palace Jailer plus two cards in hand, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just close. Ooh, and what's your last card? Scrapwork Mutt. Okay. Let's draw him to Turok. I don't think that's super what I'm looking for. Let's go Jace the Mind Sculptor. I don't think I need white. And tap it like this. And look at your top card. Virtue of Loyalty. Okay. Yes, I will put that on the bottom. I actually don't want Virtue. And here, I actually think I've got an Island Cyclorian revealed. I can only get a tap land though. No, I'm just going to play the Oko and plus it. I don't, I don't want to give up a Lorien revealed. All right, let's pass. So now, under the current circumstances, neither Planeswalker is necessarily going to die. I don't want to know what Adam's drawing and don't know what the last card in hand is, but I'm threatening to take back Monarchy in multiple ways here. Potentially Restless Cottage attacking, potentially my food token attacking. Or just attacking me? Oh, wow, okay. Interesting, I go to eight. What burn spell are we are we looking at here? Let's draw. Grist is nice. All right, let's go him to Turok to start things off. To prompt any instant speed play. Am I gonna get bolted or something? Or maybe this is Cathar Commando. It is Cathar Commando, that was our plan. All right, him. Getting path and mountain. All right. Um, I'm at eight. You have no cards in hand. I'm probably not taking the monarchy this turn. I guess I can Oko the food token. We could just block. Let's let's draw three cards. Let's chase the mind sculptor. Okay. Mm. Let's put back. Bone Shards and Imperial Seal, I think. Well, what else, what else am I going to do? Yeah. I guess if I Oko the food, the Cathar Commando just probably kills it, but I think that that's okay. Hmm. Interesting. Do I want to Oko the food? Trade for Cathar Commando. Yeah, I think so. Oko the food token. It kind of makes sense to Cathar Commando it here. The risk you run is if you don't do that and I have a removal spell for the Commando, I get to take the Monarchy. So I, I feel that there's a pretty good chance that happens. I kind of feel like I should have been attacked instead of my, or my Planeswalkers maybe should have been attacked. But I guess if you've got Fiery Confluence to draw to or something, we'll see. And then my plan afterwards is to go Urza plus Lorien Revealed get Zagoth Triumph. All right, yeah, this this makes sense. Though maybe I should have actually played the Urza first, so I could sack the food to to gain. Though then I have to tap a construct. I don't really want to do. Let's do Zagoth Triumph. Play it. All right, and now I have more green mana. Opponent's got zero cards in hand. Please don't draw a Parallax Wave. <laughs> Parallax Wave. I might be able to still beat, honestly, but it would be hard. Most cards, I mean, Winds of Abandon's already gone, Path to Exile's already gone. A lot of the, like, that's the big card that I, I'm really worried about. We'll see, though. Because next turn I get to play Grist and use, I mean, it's just to use 17 Planeswalkers next turn. Plus Urza, maybe, though. I think I might attack with Restless Cottage over spinning with Urza. Like, imagine... Okoing, I guess I don't even necessarily want to Oko. Maybe I just bounce with Jace. I don't really want to bounce Palace Jailer, but I could definitely bounce Scrapwork Mud. I feel like Adam's drawn something good. 
otherwise you wouldn't you would just pass the turn or play the card <laughs> like if it was something simple it could be like a fiery confluence I think I can beat Fiery Confluence right now. You can kill the Construct, deal four to me, down to four, but then I don't die to the two creatures because I have Urza. You can also deal six to me, down to two, but then I definitely don't die because I can't take damage off attacking. Selfless Spirit, I see. Okay, you draw end of turn. Let's draw for my turn. Oh, man, Walking Ballista. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I can play it for eight. Yeah, I guess I'm going to do that. And then you sack Selfless Spirit in response, maybe at best. All right, let's just play a gigantic Walking Ballista. And on the stack, if you sack Selfless Spirit, I can then Jace if I want to. I mean, I, I, I could live with another turn of uh, my opponent having the Monarch given that Walking Ballista basically kills every creature they have in play. Yeah, I mean, that's a good play. I think you, you are supposed to do it that way. Um, so we're both indestructible. It's plus two on you. Archon of Emeria, that's fine. I don't care about that. And plus two Oko and just pass the turn. Now you draw Archon of Emeria, plus you had whatever you had from the Monarchy last turn, and you get to an end of turn draw. But the, the window is closing rapidly, because I'm every turn I get to activate Oko, I get to activate Jace, I get to maybe activate Urza, or at the very least spend a lot of mana via Urza. I have a Grist coming down, too. Archon, sure. And then draw, I think that's fine, too. And I have food tokens, so it's not like I'm going to get burned out. I do have to worry about uh, Parallax Wave. That is a, that is a card I'm, I'm somewhat concerned with. All right, so let's go Nug the Scrapwork Mutt. Nug Palace Jailer. Nug Palace Jailer. Uh, bounce the Archon with Jace. Oko, make my food into a 3-3. I guess I can't use Restless Cottage if I want to play Grist. Maybe I just do that, though. Maybe I just animate the Cottage, because that gets me another food token, which I think is actually better than anything else I could be doing here. Attack with everything. I'm going to leave Urza back because of uh, the Scrapwork. Oh, I guess I can actually just eat the Scrapwork Hound, so even better. And, but I'll, I think actually leaving Urza back is fine. And I'll leave the mana up. I don't really need to activate Ballista here. Yeah, I become the Monarch. Um, and then I just pass the turn. And now I, I can't really easily get burned out. And I have certainly more than lethal next turn. So I think, I think we got this. I think even a path, a Parallax Wave is not going to do it at this point. I'm just, I've activated my Planeswalkers too many times. When you have a game where Jace has just been in play for five turns, it's just not not going to go your opponent's way. All right. Boom. We got a match. 1-0. and oh. Let's get to round two. All right. Time for round two. It was a clean sweep. We 4 0 Boom. Take that. And I'm going to keep this hand. I'm playing against Troll Ascetic, who was on like a multicolor artifact combo deck with Displacer Kitten, Coveted Jewel, all that sort of thing. Let's see. I'm actually going to play Vinestock because I... I can't crack Marsh Flats for Zagoth Triome here without turning off Teferi, so let's not do that. Reckoner Bankbuster. That's a little unfortunate because I was hoping to get to Spell Pierce something next turn, and there's like a pretty good chance that uh, Troll Static like Matt, by the way, is his name. Uh, Matt is going to leave mana up for Bankbuster, so probably not going to get to land a Spell Pierce here. Yeah, I see, like Chromatic Star. Pass with Bankbuster up. Mm. What I might do, hmm. I'm deciding whether which, whether which Planeswalker to play next turn. This hand really, really would have liked to, to be on the play here, as as would most. All right, get planes. 
Island Cycle, the Lorien Revealed, just get Island. And take my turn, land. I think I play Oko, because it's just more powerful to have him play than Teferi. Are we drawing with Bankbuster or are we casting Memory Lapse? Uh, sure, that's fine. Obviously, I would prefer to have, just have Oko resolve, but I, you didn't get to draw with Bankbuster on that turn, so it's just really not the end of the world. Trinket Mage, okay. Probably getting a piece of power here, right? I guess. Can't be Soul Ring, at least. We, we know that. Next turn, <laughs> I'm going to get to play a Planeswalker and have Spell Pierce up. Probably Oko still again. Oh, getting Retrofitter Foundry. All right. Well, oh, into Emery. Milling a Talisman and a Nettle Cyst. And there's also Chromatic Star to mill there. Yeah, I don't love how this is going. I, I'm just on the draw, kind of outmanned here. Um, I might just bounce the Emery with, I think I'll play this and play Teferi and bounce Emery just to give myself a little bit more time into a grist. I just, I'm, I'm just on the, just behind the eight ball here on just affecting the board. I'm not really able to kind of leverage these planeswalkers. What, what's going to happen, especially since the bank buster and the trinket mage, I'm just going to play a Planeswalker and it's just going to get attacked and, and killed every turn. So I really don't like that. I could use Entomb. That would be a good draw. I guess one way for this to, to break my way is somehow Matt just makes a big play that I get to Spell Pierce. But I don't think that's going to happen. Retrofitter Foundry, Emery. Are we cracking the star? Sure. Emery for two mana. Or rather, for one mana. And then me, maybe I get to mill something. Probably not. Wow, this is a nice blue-white artifact deck. Palantir and Thought Monitor and Ingenious Smith and Mishra's Bauble. Plus Inventor's Fair, yeah. <laughs> Mind Twist. Yeah, it's not really going to do much here. Um, I kind of just wanted Jason to draw some cards. And see where we're at. I don't know. It feels like one of the ways I maybe get out of this is like setting up Archon. So I think Jace brainstorming. I could have left Swamp up, but I thought there was a chance I'd want to play Zagoth Triumph this turn. I don't know. It's the only way it would really matter is if I draw in Tomb. Or I guess Imperial Seal. Oh wow. Yeah. Um Dress, and then I guess I'll put persist on top. It doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I don't think, uh, man, even Imperial Sealing wouldn't really work that well. I could Imperial Seal, but then I don't have black mana. Like next turn, I could Imperial. I could have Imperial Sealed if I had played my Swamp first or Entomb, but then I draw Entomb and have Entomb persist and no, n not double black because my Jace is not surviving this turn. I wouldn't not imagine. All right, all right, we're, we're done here. I, uh, I'm just getting completely valued out. All right, well, all those cards are good and work well together. I didn't see, like, a Telerian Academy, which would be the, the card I'm really worried about. I think the Voidwalker looks pretty good here. I guess Engineered Explosives does, too. Yeah, Killing Retrofitter already is, like, pretty nice. Mm, I do still like almost all my cards, though, so what do I want to cut? I don't think I want to... I guess I could cut Bone Shards from what I saw. It looked kind of bad. It is a discard outlet, but I can't I can't necessarily keep it all. I think Force Negation is probably good. Yeah. I could cut down on one of the Talismans, maybe. I think Snuff Out's probably still good. I like no, I like all the Planeswalkers. Mm. I really do want the Void Walker, and I'm just deciding about this Engineered Explosives. I guess having a way to kill Retrofitter Foundry is good, but it wouldn't have been that good that game. But having no answer to that see, makes me a little uncomfortable. I guess I could Oko the Retrofitter into a 3-3. That would, need, that would be not the ideal way to go about it. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I guess I could cut Spell Pierce. Yeah, I guess I could see doing that. I don't know. 
I don't really love it, but I could see a lot of turns where Matt's just not that vulnerable to spell pierce. All his cards are so cheap. That that's what kind of scares me about it. Okay, well, we have a good start here, but let's close out the draft, shall we? Uh, I do think that this is a matchup where having the forces are pretty good. Like, I have two forces and two counters, and I have Snuff Out and a bunch of Planeswalkers. Like, I have a lot of ways to leverage being ahead or at parity, but I just fell too far behind. All my cards cost three. I, got, I drew none of my zero mana cards, so nothing, no Snuff Out, no Force of Will, no Force of Negation. And all Matt's plays cost like one or two mana, and my plays all cost like three or four, and so I just couldn't get more things into play, basically. All right, let's go ahead and play first. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. And yeah, I'll keep this, and I guess put a Swamp on the bottom. I'm going to lead on Marsh Flats that gets Zagoth Triumph. I'm going to keep Silent Clearing to cast the Seasoned Engineer, and I'm really going to hope to draw a Talisman. That would be my best draw. I guess Green-White Talisman? Maybe? I don't know. Turn one candle. All right. That heavily implies Tolarian Academy. I will say that. All right. Talisman. No. Lorien Revealed. I'm going to wait on that one. I, d I already got my tap land, so I might want to pitch Lorien Revealed to Force of Will here. Oh, yikes. Is this a turn two Coveted Jewel? I guess I have to force that. Mm. Or Might Stone, Weak Stone. I am going to force that still. I think I'm actually going to force pitching the Glen. I just don't want to use Lorien Reveal when I don't know if I have my fourth land. It just feels kind of risky. Let's draw. All right. Play Silent Clearing. Oh, maybe I actually should have just cycled Lorien Reveal and played that the island. I don't know. Because that now I'm locked into Silent Clearing being my fourth land. Oh, man. Are we workshopping again something giant? No. Bank Buster's okay. Eh, Retrofitter's annoying. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to cycle this now. And draw Force Negation. No, him to Turok. No, that doesn't do much for me. Let's go Seasoned Engineer. I think I just have to. I don't think playing a Jace and having it die to Bank Buster or plussing it so it doesn't works that well. I'll do this, and I guess I get a Swamp. Pass the turn to draw off Bank Buster. So you're not using Retrofitter at least. Die really badly to a Tolarian Academy here. It won't even be close. But without that, the Misha's Workshop can't doesn't work with the Retrofitter. Bank Buster, if you... Oh, there's the Academy. This deck's my dream. Well, I'll have to suffice, be, suffice to say it, I will have to be satisfied Winning the draft instead, because I think we're going to. But I'm not winning this. This this is <laughs> this is uh not happening. <laughs> yeah. We're about to be one and one in a second here. I just don't really I can't keep up with I mean Okay, you've had too much fun. You cannot have any more fun. All right. Well, that was a mauling. Wasn't close to being close. Let's hope round three goes better. All righty. Time for round three. They've narrowed the score. It's now six to three. So one more win clinches it for us. Playing against Jaybro, who's on blue-black. Ooh, I like this hand. I know it has no blue sources yet, but I get to go Restless Cottage and then Cycle Miscalc. And if I draw... I mean, if I draw a black-white talisman, that'd be fantastic, or or, or white-green. But uh, I'm getting inquisitioned. Yeah, that's really annoying, because I was really hoping to, to land a nice mind twist, and showing J-Bro Force of Will does uh, negate the effectiveness of it, but I assume the mind twist is going to get taken. You could take Miscalc and hope I don't draw blue lands, but that seems, or any lands, but that seems a little ambitious. All right. So, not... Ideal, and then I drew a really bad card, so that's less ideal. 
On the other hand, it can get back seasoned engineer. So let's see. Okay, I'm gonna cycle miscalculation here because I didn't draw blue. All right, that does actually count as blue to draw. Hmm. Well, I didn't force the suspicious stowaway because I didn't think I would. that would be a good way to win this game. And now, unfortunately, it is gonna get to flip here, but Inquisition into stowaway is really strong. Hopefully, hopefully I can find a land. The problem is because I haven't drawn a blue card yet, I mean, I had to use Lord and Reveal to cycle, obviously. Even if I draw a land, I don't have Force of Will back up for Jace. So if I draw planes for Seasoned Engineer, that's a different story. <clears throat> Let's see what this is. Of course, Bone Shards would be my best draw. If I could draw Bone Shards, I might actually win this game. Oh, we're getting V-clicked. Um, what do you take here? 15, I'm just deciding. Yeah, I guess I, I, guess I just have to force it. Play my Talisman. This flips back the Suspicious Toy, and then next turn I get to play a Seasoned Engineer. Obviously there's a lot that can go wrong, but j Bro had a really sick 1-2-3 curve, right? Inquisition into Stoy into Vendillion Click, and in the Control Mirror is pretty tough. So I don't feel like this is going to work out well. Okay, take the Dungeoneer, and I draw Bone Shards. Deal? Deal. Obviously, it's pretty dangerous when I have Archon of Cruelty persist in hand. He might just take the Archon of Cruelty here, because Seasoned Dungeoneer into an unblockable creature isn't the best either. All right, takes the Dungeoneer. Bone Shards time. <clears throat> we can get there. I feel, I feel it. I'm feeling the Bone Shards. Heart of the cards here. I do think my deck is kind of good for this matchup, or at least has some good cards, but so does j -Bros. I mean, Inquisition, Brain Maggot. Vendillion Click, like all the cards he's played are great in the Control Mirror. So are both Forces and Mind Twist, so, and I also have like Duress and him, so hopefully that shows up more in the next couple of games. What, what are we doing here? Are we thinking of casting Grief? Oh, take my Persist. Okay. Well, uh, that doesn't make me optimistic about my chances here. I'm going to Duress Jabra, then I'm going to Concede. There's... Jace, all right, well, let's hope we don't, we don't beef it at the finish line here, shall we? Um, Dothy Voidwalker I definitely like. Kind of like Fallen Shinobi in this sort of matchup. I generally don't like Bone Shards, even though it would have been good there. It doesn't have that many things that I want to to use bone shards on and I kind of want to cut imperial seal too I just hate imperial seal when they have a bunch of counter spells shinobi can go off voidwalker grist tokens jace uh, glenalendra urza token I think that uh but ballista also actually seems probably better but I like ballista because he's got stowaway vendillion click brain maggot these are all really good cards to walk in ballista is there any chance I just want to take out archon and tomb persist I guess against, I kind of do, against a Grief deck where I also don't want Imperial Seal in my deck, I will do that. I'll keep Unearth in, because Unearth Grist is a pretty nice little combo, same with a Voidwalker. And I, I think I put in Consider over Sahili. Yeah, okay, I actually do kind of like this plan. I'm taking out the, the, the synergistic, like the powerful synergistic but requires multiple pieces combo for a bunch of cards that are generally just better on their own. All right, well, now I would like to draw a black source, I guess. But if I do, I actually think this is a fantastic hand. Turn two, Dothy. Turn three, him. Could be really, really good. Okay, let's open up the Inquisition again. Oh, getting probed. Don't love that either. Knows about all my tricks. All right, black source. Lead on Inquisition. Okay, well, he can't take Dothy Voidwalker. I guess he takes Oko here. Oh, J-Bro. That was not a good play, my friend. In fact, that was a really bad one. <laughs> that was, and I even drew the Zagoth Triumph for the full punish. Uh, yeah, that 
was not the play I would recommend you make against Unearth. I guess the, you get some value out of playing cards people don't normally play. That Unearth is just looking sick right now. Now I just draw Spell Pierce? No. All right, let's just go him. Him with Voidwalker up. Let's see what he hit. Snapcaster Mage and Swamp. Um, sadly, that was not, not a good hit. I was hoping to Voidwalker something absurdly large. But Snapcaster Mage into him could be good. Uh, sure. This I'll allow. All right. Now it's time to draw a blue card. Oh, Fallen Shinobi. Oh, yeah, we're doing that. That's what we're doing. And Fallen Shinobi has got to scare j Bro after this. <laughs> like, once you see a Fallen Shinobi, you're allergic to it. And I still have Force of Will up here, so I'm not really that worried about something happening. And if I fall in Shinobi to anything decent, then we are we are doing it. Let's see how this goes. All right, well, let's see if I can get a good fallen Shinobi hit in here and uh, see how, see what that what return that has. All right, fallen Shinobi, what did I hit? Thirst for discovery and island. All right, I'll, I'll cast thirst. Sure, I'll discard a basic swamp. Why not? All right, now Fallen Shinobi is ready to roll. You gotta have a blocker back for that. It's gonna be pretty hard because I have Force of Will for a play and then Teferi bounce a blocker. Okay, getting hit by Stowaway. I don't think j a reanimator deck though. Could be wrong, but no, no. All right. All right, going to game three. That was nice, that was nice. Still don't think I want Sahili. Yeah, basically, my fear with Archon is, like, I don't want Imperial Seal in my deck. I don't want to just draw in Tomb and have my, like, Persist get countered or griefed. Like, imagine if j Bro goes Inquisition, your Persist, then I draw in Tomb later. It's just horrible. Or I just draw Archon. I don't want Bone Shards in my deck either. It just feels right to take out the whole combo. Don't think I want Terra Sunder here. Yeah. I think we're ready to... To try our luck here. I'd, we we stole a march on that it, on that in, in, in unearth play. That that was a a bit of a misstep. Let's see how game three goes. Maybe Jbro won't Inquisition me on turn one this game. I wouldn't mind that. Just once can they draw Inquisition in the middle of the game when it's like really bad? <laughs> so I guess really I'm just looking for a turn two Dothy Voidwalker one way or another. That would be really good. I do like having forces, though. The forces are a little worse against j -Bro, given that he's got uh, both Gataxian Probe, Inquisition, oh, and Vendillion Click. Just like once you see a force, it becomes a lot less effective. All right, I'm in for this. This hand threatens to, to Shinobi off Walking Ballista. And if I draw green, I've got two Planeswalkers, which are pretty nice. Lead on Swamp because of Dothy Voidwalker. Cycle Troll, sure. Get your Underground C, very nice. All right. And wouldn't mind drawing a Zagoth Triome here. A Triome, let's see what we get. And I'm probably just gonna play the Ballista for one. I don't think playing Talisman does too much for me. I guess what playing Talisman does is if I drew Sieges and Dungeoneer on turn three, I'd be able to play it. Or if I draw like a Jace or something. But I don't have second blue yet, so, so I'd have to like draw the Jace this turn. Otherwise, I think just getting the Ballista into place seems nice. What's going on, J-Bro? Feels like a... All right, there's another island. So I could play that in case I draw Jace. Hmm. Do you have much removal? No, let's actually play Talisman, because then you can just play Ballista for for X equals 2 next turn, maybe. I really hope I don't get V-clicked. I guess that would be the annoying part. Right, draw. Didn't get V-clicked. Let's play the Swamp and play. I'm actually going to play Ballista for 1 here. 
think. I should have played a different land, actually. No, I'll play Ballista for two. That's fine. I was considering... What, what, I, what I should have done, I think, is play Ballista for one, and then cycle Lorraine Revealed and play the Zagoth Triumph. Because that would have given me the mana I need for the two Planeswalkers next turn. Because Jabro saw Fallen Shinobi last game, I really don't think he's going to let the Walking Ballista get a, get a hit in here, if he can avoid it. But I haven't seen a ton of removal from him. If he leaves all his mana up and he has Commit Memory in deck, I'm not going for the ninja, I don't think. What I would really like to draw this turn is Duress. That's true most turns against J-Bro <laughs> in this matchup. But if I don't draw Duress, yeah, we'll see. Maybe he's got like Brain Maggot or Suspicious Stoy or Vendillion Click. Hopefully he's drawn some of those cards because they're pretty bad against Ballista. Let's see. Shielder's Edict would be kind of annoying. That's what he leads with. I'm definitely not throwing the ninja out at the first opportunity, though. Jabro's too cunning for, for that to work. So, All right, let's see. There's a lot of different things he could have. Inquisition is probably not the, the end of the world for me, because you can take one of my green planeswalkers, of which I can play neither. All right. Well, Jabro's got a tough play this turn. I mean, he doesn't have, like, a really good play, which is nice. Or at least I assume so. Maybe he's got a bunch of really good plays, and I'm deciding which awesome play to make. Oh, he did have the Shield Edict. Okay. All right. I just want to draw something to play next turn, I guess. Each opponent sacks a non-token creature, yeah. Yeah. I should have played the Zagoth Triumph last turn, though. All right. Draw... Oh, that's pretty nice. Just gonna snuff that out. You know what? I'm just gonna cast the Lorien Revealed. Who am I kidding? I drew snuff out, so that was a zero mana play. Okay, well that was a really bad set of three cards. I needed to draw a green source or spells. I drew a Dothy Voidwalker. Okay, okay, Zagoth Triumph is something. Let's cast Dothy Voidwalker. Leaving three mana up. I am worried about Cryptic Command, but there's really nothing I can do about that. Probably counter draw, I assume. Yeah. Play Zagoth Triumph, pass the turn. All right. Dress, dress, Force of Negation. I mean, I guess I'd even take Force of Will. He's got Gear Hulk in his deck, so I really don't want to just like tap out into it. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Time warp. Sure, that's fine. Didn't really get much of an advantage from that time warp. Brain maggot. Yeah. I just need to draw some spells. Like, we're, we're just trading cards back and forth here. He two for one me off Cryptic. I three for one demo off Florian Revealed. He two for one me off Thirst for Discovery. So, like, you know, he's up... A card on Thirst and a card on Cryptic, and I'm up two cards on Lorien Revealed. Technically, I guess we're equal. The Brain Maggot's kind of two for one me, but not really, because the 1-1 one, one body doesn't really do all that much. But if I could draw Duress or Force of Negation next turn, I'll be very happy. Force of Will would not be like that exciting, just because I don't have enough mana to hard cast it and cast one of the things. Seasoned Engineer would also be fine, or Urza. Basically, just looking for us. I can cast one of these Planeswalkers next turn, so I'm looking for a spell to go alongside them. He has killed all my two creatures, <laughs> so Fallen Shinobi is not getting in there. Okay. Well, again, j -Bro's kind of in the tank as to what to take, which might mean that he can't counter the second Planeswalker. It might just mean he can counter a second Planeswalker. He's deciding which one... He wants under a brain magnet which one he wants to get encountered. I don't know. If I could stack my deck, what would I put on top? Honestly, I'd probably just put Force of Negation on top. I think that that's the card that would be best for me to draw right now. The funny thing about having the Archon of Cruelty in my deck is I actually would be able to cast it now. All right, Grist. 
and he's casting something else. Revoker. Oh, Revoke Oko. Sure, Brain Maggot into Revoker is a good combo. Um, the Ballista's already gone. Dang, the Ballista is pretty good against him. I just didn't really have a draw where I could avoid playing Ballista. Not land, please. Well, for drawing land, it's not the worst. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I cast it. I don't know. It's not like I, it's getting better, and I play that. And I can start attacking with the Shinobi, I guess. What else am I going to do here? All right. Now I would take Force of Will. Unearth, huh? All right, I'm going to unearth the Voidwalker. I think that's better than... Drawing a random card. And I guess I'll play Oko. Just in case J Bro draws Inquisition or something. I mean, I think he just has Gear Crypt Gear Hulk in hand. I'm not attacking with this Fallen Shinobi into Gear Hulk, but by casting spells pre-combat, he's forced to do something. If he wants to use the, the gear hook to to like cryptic my team and kill Oko, that, that's fine. The Oko's not doing anything anyway. Now I don't really want to draw duress or force negation. I want to draw force of will. Mana leak's almost even getting too slow too low for uh gear hulk purposes. He has nine mana. It's two cards in hand. Could have commit memory as well. That's another expensive card J Bro has. Okay. Let's draw action, 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 action. Interesting. So if I mind twist for two, you can cryptic counter. Yeah, that's that's fine. Mind twist you for two. I'm just gonna force something. <laughs> something is going to happen here. <laughs> we'll find out what it is. The thing is if if he casts a cryptic command and doesn't bounce the Dothy Voidwalker, then Dothy Voidwalker gets to cast a cryptic command, and that's probably going to be pretty good. Like, I get to like tap his team and hit with Fallen Shinobi as one possibility. Get to maybe bounce the Brain Maggot or Revoker so I can get a use of my uh, Planeswalkers. Okay, okay. Unearth really pulled its weight this draft. I only had it in this this match and it was it won me game two and having a dothy voidwalker in play makes this turn a lot stronger like what's j bro's best play cryptic the thing is if you just go bounce dothy draw a card then you lose the other two cards to mind twist so that doesn't really work commit memory the fallen shinobi okay wow that's really good because now the commit memory is exiled so i can dothy voidwalker and then mana drain um, sure, you have nothing there. That's fine. Jibro's at 18. Uh, I have Commit Memory under Dothy Voidwalker currently. And I'm drawing... Which means I could cast either side of this. Oh, no. I can't. I can't cast Memory. I can only cast Commit. I could also cast Mana Drain, technically. Um, you're at 18. I'm just deciding... I'm going to attack with the Restless Vine Stock here. I'm just deciding whether I want to attack with the Dothy Voidwalker or not. It kind of feels like I should not. Here, I'll make a Dothy Voidwalker into a 3-3. Three, three. Because right now, Dothy Voidwalker can cast Commit and counter anything j -Bro plays. So I think this is fine. You, I'm drawing a Fallen Shinobi in not this turn, but next. You can attack Oko down to one here if you want. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, and then once I draw a Fallen Shinobi, then, then I can just go for it, too. Okay. You're at 13, so now this puts you to eight. And I guess it would have been lethal... Like, I guess next turn. But it's still lethal next turn either way. I guess I'll play my land, that's fine. Like, I could have hit 
Jay brought in a two right now, but my Dothy Voidwalker would have been tapped. And we'll see what this is. Gaunty Lord of Luxury. Uh, right. And you can get Fallen Shinobi or another card. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to mana drain that. All right. Yeah. I'm going to get mana drain, and then I'm going to mana drain the Gaunty here. Unfortunately, I don't have mana left, or uh, I don't have anything to spend it on. So actually what Jabro has to do now, yeah, this is the, exactly the right play. Attack with that, because you have to chump the uh, the vine stock, or Fallen Shinobi comes into play, though. I guess I get to go like this, blue, green, and then still cast Fallen Shinobi. All right. I'm gonna keep Fallen Shinobi in hand just so j Bro chumps. I'm not gonna make anything to a 3-3. Yep, and then you take four, go down to four. Then I just cast Fallen Shinobi. And now you're probably in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> a Gear Hulk would do it. Um, there's not a whole lot else, we'll see. Git Probe, sure. Okay. Into Ancestral? Well, that's a way to get out of this. Wow, all right. So now Torrential Gear Hulk is just game over for me. So what do I need to draw? I guess I need to draw Force of Will. And I couldn't even attack with the Vine Stock, but I guess if Jabro just passes and I draw Force of Will, I'm just attacking with the Shinobi. I'm not going for it. What else could I draw that's good here? I guess Force of Negation would still be pretty decent because I would be able to counter whatever got cast off the Gear Hulk. Then the Gear Hulk has to block the Vine Stalk. And the Brain Maggot has to block Fallen Shinobi. And then I get Grist back, though I can't cast it because of the Vine Stalk. So, yeah. He drew the Git Probe, which then drew the Ancestral, which hopefully doesn't lead to too much. I'm feeling not great about this now. All right. Can I get some action? One more time. Nope. 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 I can't beat a Torrential Gear Hulk. I mean, what am I going to do? Like, if if Jabro has Torrential Gear Hulk and I pass, you just get to go Gear Hulk, you know, Cryptic, Gear Hulk, Ancestral, whatever. Okay, he has Snapcaster into Cryptic. Sure, that's that's okay. He can tap my team and bounce Snapcaster, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Force of Negation would have done it for me then. Oh, I guess with Force of Negation, I couldn't have activated the Vine Stock and had Force up, which is funny. Yeah. And pass the turn. Well, at least he didn't draw Gear Hulk yet. He can Snapcast our Ancestral though, so I feel like I'm going to be lo I'm losing. Like I'm losing really badly here. In fact, hopefully this is Inquisition. That would at least get, give you one card back. I just need to draw like I don't know. Just is actually the right word. I need to draw some good stuff. <laughs> Teferi Time Raveler would be would be pretty nice. Knight's Whisper down to two. I can't really take advantage of that. Yeah, so it looks like we, we went, might have go, go from a 6-1 lead to a 6-6 tie. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be on me. I thought I was really far. Well, I thought I was losing for a while. Then I thought I was definitely winning when I uh, the, the mind twist turned into Dothy. Obviously, attacking a little more with Dothy might have worked out better, but it felt like when Jabro has cards, like I guess I didn't even know about Ancestral, but just cards like Gaunti or Torrential Gear Hulk that just break the game open, it feels pretty hard for me to want to tap my Dothy that's a counterspell. So, I don't know. I mean, Jibro at the very least has Snapcaster Ancestral that could hit Gear Hulk, which I guess no longer hits too... too no, it still hits like Shieldred's Edict. Like, that's plenty of on-the-board stuff. Oh, come on, Jibro, put me out of my misery. I've just had no cards in hand for like the past five turns, just, just hoping to top-deck something good. Jibro is 
still pondering over there. Maybe he doesn't didn't hit the gear hulk. Last turn, it would have been really nice to draw a removal for Snapcaster. Though I guess I already drew Snuff out, so I don't have that much more removal for it. I'm asking my team if we're if we're gonna fumble <laughs> at the finish line. You know, if you don't win, you don't win. Okay, please be Inquisition. There's not much else I could even possibly beat here. This doesn't look like Inquisition, though. This looks like an actual spell. It would be fair for Jaber to draw Inquisition at this point in the game, though. That I would I would allow. Things he clearly doesn't have anything. I let him do the whole Snapcaster loop there without any disruption, so... It's obvious I don't have a whole lot. This Restless Fine Stock is, is doing pretty good work, though. That I will say. This Fallen Shinobi kind of is, too. I just... It's, he had to commit memory it. It's used some good... Uh, Good attacks in. We'll see. It hasn't connected, of course, but that's just, you know, that card doesn't... The game doesn't tend to go on after Fallen Shinobi connects. All right. This is a, a apparently a tough turn. Let's see what you got. Again, feels like I don't have much of a chance here, but I, it is possible that drawing Force of Negation or Force of Will would would be good enough here. Like it's possible one counter spell can lock things up. It's also possible that I draw like what even do I have? What's my best draw here? I still think it's probably force of will, I guess, or force of negation. Either one of those, the force of will's better. Glenn, Teferi, Urza, those are all like some decent action draws. So maybe those? Okay. Guess we're Snap Ancestraling then. Yep. What a sick chain. Just Ancestral into Snapcaster into Ancestral. Just just completely going nuts here. Please Inquisition me and don't have six mana up. Because like you didn't draw Gearhulk and you did draw Inquisition and you just have to cast it. Please. you got to do it. What if I drew something great and I just chose not to cast it that last turn with a million mana? <laughs> what if I drew a green card? One thing I could have done differently this game, by the way, is not attack or not play Oko. Oh, he's playing Tassigur. That's what he's playing. Oh, now I figured it out. Playing Oko, let Oko get attacked. And then eventually the Revoker died and Oko would have gotten to be activated. So I was, I didn't, it didn't look like the, the board was such where Oko would get attacked down too quickly. And I didn't want to get it inquisitioned, but it just didn't work out well. So I don't know. That's. I'm not sure that I would do it differently in that spot, but certainly wasn't ideal. Okay, well, that does mean Jabro has not drawn Gear Hulk, because you would not tap down if you did. All right, it means I've got a chance here. So you're saying there's a chance. Counterspell, come on. Not land, counterspell. Well, all right, I mean... Force of Negation? Oh, Glenn. Okay, so... If I play Glen, I could no longer attack with Vinestock. If I attack with Vinestock currently, I make Tassiger into a 3-3 and attack with both. Chump. What do I lose to then? Uh, the Glen would have been such a good draw if it was first, but now I, and I didn't play a land last turn because I, I thought you might Inquisition me, and now I'm one mana short. As per the usual, I think I'm going to play Glenn here. It feels like if Glenn resolves, it feels like it's going to put Jabro in a kind of a tough spot. It's also lethal by itself attacking. And it can set up a really good attack next turn. And also, if I if I went to attack and he had a removal spell, it would just be such a disaster. I could also attack with Fallen Shinobi here. I probably should. Oh, he just had Counterspell. Sure. Okay, I mean, I, I am going to attack with Fallen Shinobi here. Forcing the Tassigur trade is good. 
because Tasker has a better ability than Fallen Shinobi. Fallen Shinobi doesn't really do much. The biggest reason not to is Restless Vinestalk, but j has a lot of mana. So it feels like letting him Tasker seems not ideal. Okay. I feel like this game is like breaking j -Bro's brain. He j -Bro's normally plays very fast, and he's been playing so slow. All right. Sure, we'll trade off. Pass the turn. Okay. Oh, we had something else too. <laughs> yep, yep. V click, see my island. Okay. I mean, no, no gear hold. No, this that's way too fast. J Bro has something. All right, force time. It's time for force. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for me to go lose. Time for me to go take my medicine. Tishana's Tide Binder. And then I just die. All right. Well, let's see if we win this draft. But currently I went one and two. Sick match. That Ancestral Top deck really just broke me. But it was a, it was a good match. It was a good match. All right, let's see what happens. All right, well, unfortunately, I needed to win that one. They battled back from a 6-1 deficit to a 6-6 tie. Well, that's what we play for, the sick matches, and uh, that certainly counts. So, unfortunately, didn't quite get there, but I, it went 1-2 and two at the deck, so certainly some of the, the, the tie instead of a win equity falls onto me. But I like this deck. I like the way things... Uh, looked but didn't play out as well as I'd hoped I guess never really landed that like big play into force of will that I was hoping with the double forces and even the spell pierce all right well you know can't win them all sometimes you tie them <laughs> that'll do it for today thanks for watching I appreciate you uh watching me assemble force of will force negation and a lot of planeswalkers even if we didn't quite get all the wins we were hoping for the mini reanimate package was pretty nice too That'll do it for today. Check back tomorrow. We've got another draft coming. It's going to be a good one. I can already tell. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.